Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the data series. Today I hope to introduce you guys to the first machine learning algorithm, which is also a fairly common statistical method called linear regression. So without further ado, let's begin. Linear regression is a fairly common supervised machine learning algorithm. If you're not sure what that is, I would definitely recommend checking out the previous episode of an introduction to machine learning. That's used to make predictions for num numerical data, such as future house prices or next year's sales of a company. It's important to note that linear regression should only be used on variables where there seems to be a linear relationship. What do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, we were to take a sample of houses and we were to plot the house size in meters squared against the house price. And this was the this was the result of all the data points. And we can see that this follows a roughly linear relationship. How do we know? Because we can draw a line through the data points and it seems to capture the relationship with the data quite well. So this would be considered linear and will be an appropriate data set to apply linear regression to. Now let's say, for example, we were to take a sample of NBA players and we plotted the height of the NBA players against the number of points scored. And we can see here that it seems a fairly random distribution and this would be considered non-linear because we can't really draw a line for our data that doesn't seem to capture the, any relationship within the data. So this would be considered non-linear and would not be appropriate data set to apply linear regression to. Let's say we would take a sample of people and recorded their IQ and plotted it against the time taken to solve a puzzle. This could also be considered linear because we can draw a line that seems to capture the general relationship. And again, this will be an appropriate data set to apply linear regression to. For our final example, let's say we were to plot the time spent studying versus the exam result in terms of percentage. So we could draw a line here to try to capture the relationship. And it does seem to do, does seem to do a fairly good job at doing that. However, it may seem more appropriate to draw a line that looks something like this, perhaps. So in this case, this would be non-linear. However, there is still definitely a relationship. And the way that we capture this relationship is through something called non-linear regression, which is something I hope to go over in the future, which is much better at capturing these sorts of relationships. Let's now give an overview of linear regression by looking at a real-life example of how linear regression is used to predict humidity values in Hungary given a particular temperature. So the job of the linear regression in this case is to find a mathematical relationship between humidity and temperature. It does this by finding what's called the regression line, which is shown below. We see that this line gives the general trend of the data. That is, as temperature increases, humidity decreases. We can then use this line to make predictions for, humi for humidity given any temperature value. Because we are using temperature to predict humidity, temperature can, can be thought of as our input x and humidity our output y. Before seeing how this regression line is calculated, let's go through some basic data science terminology. The data we are using to build this regression line is called our training data x, which basically corresponds to each of these data points. This is the data we use to plot our graph. Each training example is called x1, which represents both the temperature and humidity value, x2, x3, all the way to xm, where m is considered to be our last training example, also the number of training examples. Now, the variable we are trying to predict is humidity, which is our output y. Each output is considered to be y1, y2, y3, all the way to ym, again, where m is our last training example. Let's now see how the regression line is calculated using this data. The formula of our regression line is given by y hat equals d to zero plus d to one x. Now let's break this down. Y hat is considered to be our predicted value for humidity. And this should not be confused with Y, which is our actual output or our actual values for humidity, which we, which we recorded on the graph. X is our input temperature which we'll be putting into the formula to come up with a predicted value for humidity. And lastly, theta zero and theta one, which are the most important elements of the regression line, are what are called parameters. Changing the values of these parameters change the position of our regression line. So it is these parameters that we are most interested in calculating. For example, if theta zero was 
1 and theta 1 was minus 0 0.04, we'll get a regression line of y hat equals 1 minus 0 0.04x, which is plotted on the graph here. And if theta 0 was 1.3 and theta 1 was minus 0 0.05, we'll get y hat equals 1.3 minus 0 0.05x, which is plotted on the graph here. And lastly, if theta 0 is 1.1 and theta 1 was minus 0 0.035, we'll get a regression line of y hat equals 1.1 minus 0.035x, which is plotted on the graph here. Now, which of these lines seem to capture the relationship between temperature and humidity the best? We could definitely say perhaps it's the green line. And the reason why is because of something called the cost function. Notice that on the majority of points on the graph, there is an error between the data point recorded and the regression line. For example, at a temperature of 10.4 degrees, we observed a humidity value of 0.62. However, our regression line predicted a humidity value of 0.77. So the error in this case is given by y hat minus y, which is simply our predicted value minus our actual value, which in this case would simply be 0.77 minus 0.62 which equals 0.15. Now, in order to account for all the errors, not just the one calculated, but all of these deviations of the points from the regression line, we use something called the cost function, which is given by the following formula. This seems very fairly complicated on first glance, but it's actually quite a simple concept. Let's break this down. J of theta zero, theta one, simply states that this is a function that consists of the parameters theta zero and theta one. This may not seem obvious because we don't really have a theta zero or theta one. When we look at it, we only have y hat, y and m. But remember that y hat is represented by the regression line, which is y hat equals theta zero plus theta one x. So we can rewrite this formula as essentially one over two m times the sum from m i equals to one of theta zero plus theta one x i minus y i all squared. So theta zero and theta one are both our parameters in this formula. X i in this case will simply be our temperatures that we inputted. So what exactly is going on in this formula? Essentially, we're summing up all of the errors from the first error all the way to the last error. And with a slight difference, we're squaring each of the errors as we go. And the reason why we square each of the errors is to ensure that we account for every single error. What do I mean by this? Let's say, for example, we want to square the errors. And for our first predicted value minus our actual observation, we got plus three, let's say. And for the second one, we got minus two. So three minus two would give us one. And this doesn't seem to account for the fact that we deviated by three on the first observation and then two on the second one. And then all of a sudden we got an error, which, which is plus one, which seems to be closer to our regression line than both plus three and minus two. So this doesn't seem to make sense. So to ensure that our negative errors don't cancel out our positive ones, we square all of the errors to ensure that they're positive. So in this case, we would get nine and four, and then summing these up, we would get 13. So this accounts both the positive and negative errors and ensures that they don't cancel each other out. And lastly, we divide this sum of square errors by what by 2m, or multiply by one over 2m. And the reason why we do this is to get an average of the overall errors and to make the total error more readable, and also to be able to compare different linear regression models more easily. For example, in this case where we got an, an error of 9 and 4 for just two observations, we would divide this total error 13 by 2 times 2 because we only had 1 and 2 observations, which would be 13 over 4, which is roughly 3.25. Let's now go through an example to see how the cost function is calculated on just three observations. For our first case, we have a regression line of y hat equals one plus three quarters x. And in this case, theta zero equals one and theta one equals three quarters, representing these numbers here. And for the second case, we have a regression line of y hat equals three plus zero x, or simply y hat equals three. And in this case, theta zero equals three and theta one equals zero. Now, which of these regression lines fit the data best? This may seem difficult to determine at first glance, but our cost function should be able to do this for us. So for the first case, we have a function, we have the function j 
of 1 and 3 quarters, which is equal to 1 over 2 times the number of observations, which in this case is 1 over 2 times 3, times the sum of all of the squared errors, which is given by the sum from i to m of y hat i minus y i squared. So in this case, for our first error, we have an error of 0 0.75. For the second case, we have an error of minus 0 0.5. And remember, this is minus is because we're doing the predicted value here, minus the actual value. And the predicted value is given by y hat equals 1 plus 3 quarters times, and in this case, it's from a value of 2 which is equal to 1 plus 3 over 2, which is 2.5. And 2.5 minus 3, so y hat minus y, which is 2.5 minus 3, gives us minus 0 0.5, hence this error here, minus 0 0.5. And for the last one, we have an error of 1. So what we're doing now, so what we're going to do now is do is to apply the formula, which is 1 over 6 times, times the sum of the squared errors. So 1 over 6 times 0 0.75 squared plus minus 0 0.5 squared plus 1 squared. And this gives us a value of 0 0.3. And for our second regression line of y hat equals 3, we have a function j of 3, 0. Again, because theta 0 is 3 and theta 1 is 0, which is equal to, again, 1 over 2 times the number of observations, which in this case is 3, so 2 times 3. Again, times the sum of the squared errors, which is the sum from i to m of y hat i minus y i squared. And in this case, we have an error here of 2, an error here of 0, and an error here of 0. So we have simply 1 over 6 times 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared, which is 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3rd, which is 2 thirds, which is roughly 0 0.33. So in this case, because our first regression line of y hat equals 1 plus 3 quarters x produced a lower value in the cost function, this regression line fits our data better, and therefore we should use this regression line. But is this the best possible regression line to fit our data? For this, we need to know what values of theta 0 and theta 1 to choose in order to minimize our cost function. Going back to our original example, looking at the temperature and humidity values in Hungary, we're going to put a plot a graph comparing the values of theta 0 and theta 1 and seeing what effect this has on the cost function, which can be shown here. So remember, our job is to pick values of theta 0 and theta 1 that minimizes our cost function and therefore produces the regression line which fits our data best. So looking at this graph here, we can see that the minimum point of the cost function, j theta 0 theta 1, is found when theta 0 equals 1.13 here, it's roughly 1.13, and theta 1 is equal to minus 0.035. And this produces the overall regression line y hat equals 1.13 minus 0.035x, which can be shown above. And this is the regression line which fits our data best and what we should use to make future predictions. So the way in which we obtain these values of theta 0 and theta 1 that minimize our cost function is through an algorithm called gradient descent. And this is a very important algorithm in machine learning, which isn't just used in linear regression, but also in other machine learning applications. So I plan to spend a whole episode covering this algorithm. So in summary, linear regression should only be used on data that tends to follow a linear trend. For example, here and here. For these two other cases, these are non-linear. And for this case, there is a relationship, but it'll be better to use an algorithm called non-linear regression to capture this relationship, which we'll cover in future episodes. The formula for the regression line is given by y hat equals theta 0 plus theta 1 x, where theta 0 and theta 1 are our parameters, x is our input, and y hat is what we're trying to predict. And the cost function is given by the following formula, where we're essentially summing all the square errors and dividing it by 2m. 
and our object and our objective here is to pick theta zero and theta one that minimizes our cost function and produces the best regression line. We then use this regression line to make future predictions based on this relationship that we calculated of the regression line, which is what makes linear regression useful. So I hope after watching this video, you guys have a little bit better understanding of linear regression and its applications. I mentioned in the video an algorithm called gradient descent, which we use to find our parameters theta zero and theta one to minimize our cost function. This is a very universal algorithm, which isn't just used in linear regression, but also in other machine learning algorithms. So I plan to spend a whole episode dedicated to gradient descent, which I plan to cover in the next episode. So I hope to see you guys there. Take care.